Hey everyone, this lesson is on endometriosis. So we're gonna talk about what endometriosis is. We're also gonna talk about some of these signs and symptoms, how it's diagnosed and how it's treated. So what is endometriosis? So endometriosis is a gynecological condition involving the presence of endometrial tissue or endometrial mucosal cells in abnormal locations. So what this really means is that this endometrial tissue is outside of the uterus. It should be in the uterus, in the endometrium but it's in other areas where it should not be. This condition affects approximately 10 to 15% of reproductive aged females. So it affects a good portion of individuals and it has a lot of consequences, including a lot of symptoms we're gonna talk about in the next upcoming slides, but also affects fertility in patients. And it causes impaired fertility in about 30 to 40% of patients who have this condition. So it affects a significant portion of patients, both with regards to signs and symptoms and with regards to other complications, including impaired fertility. So what is the pathophysiology of endometriosis? We talked about the endometrial tissue or the endometrial mucosa being in places where it should not be. But why does this happen? Well, it's actually hypothesized that endometrial cells traverse or travel to other areas of the body during menstruation. So during menstruation, when the endometrium is sloughed off, it is believed that cells escape and will go to other locations, including the surrounding areas of the pelvis. Some get into the fallopian tubes and some cells get into the ovaries and other places in the body as well. We're going to talk about some of these locations later on when we talk about diagnosing endometriosis. So now that we've talked about what it is and how it happens, what does it actually do? What are some of the signs and symptoms of endometriosis? One of the biggest and one of the most significant symptoms of endometriosis that patients suffer from is pain. And it can be pain in certain parts of the body, but it can also be pain during certain activities. We're going to talk about them here. So the first one is pelvic pain. So pelvic pain is a significant issue for patients with endometriosis. And this pain fluctuates in intensity throughout the menstrual cycle. So because the endometrial cells respond to hormonal changes during the menstrual cycle, certain times of the menstrual cycle lead to worsening of pain. So it can be a cyclical type of pain. We can also see issues with pain in the lower abdomen, groin, and back. So it can be in a wide variety of locations. We can also see dysmenorrhea. So very painful menstrual cramping. So if it's very painful or very severe type pain, or, or if the pain worsens each menstrual cycle over time, this can be an indication that a patient may be suffering from endometriosis. We can also see issues with dyspareunia, so pain during intercourse. We can also see issues with pain while urinating, and pain while exercising. So this can be very debilitating for patients. So again, pelvic pain, pain in the lower abdomen, groin and back, dysmenorrhea, dyspareunia, pain while urinating and pain while exercising. So a lot of different areas where pain can affect an individual. Now there are other signs and symptoms of endometriosis as well. These include heavy or irregular bleeding during menstruation, dyskesia, so constipation-like symptoms, and bloating, nausea, and vomiting. So patients oftentimes have very significant pain, but also some of these other signs and symptoms as well, including heavy or irregular bleeding, dyskesia, so constipation, and bloating, nausea, and vomiting. So a lot of different signs and symptoms that can have a significant impact in one's life. So now that we know the signs and symptoms of endometriosis, how do clinicians diagnose and treat it? So the diagnosis of endometriosis often involves laparoscopy. So a lot of times because these endometrial cells travel into many different locations, oftentimes laparoscopy is required. So opening up the abdomen and looking in different areas within the abdominal cavity to see where these endometrial cells have actually traveled to. So some of the locations that we can see these endometrial cells occurring include the ovaries, as we mentioned before, the posterior cul-de-sac, broad ligament. So some of the surrounding tissues within the pelvis that support the uterus can also see it in the uterosacral ligament. 
We can also see the endometrial cells attaching to the rectosigmoid colon, bladder, and distal ureters. So again, these endometrial cells can spread into different locations. So a lot of times we need laparoscopy to see where these cells have traveled to. And histology can also be performed as well to actually see whether the tissue is actually endometrial in nature. So histology will show endometrial glands and stroma. So once endometriosis has been diagnosed, how do clinicians treat it? A lot of times combined oral contraceptive pills can be used to actually help reduce symptoms. So it can help regulate the menstrual cycle. And as we mentioned before, a lot of the pain involved in endometriosis is due to endometrial cells and endometrial tissue responding to the hormonal changes during the menstrual cycle. So having something regulating the menstrual cycle for patients can help with those symptoms. So combined oral contraceptive pills. Danazole can also be used to treat endometriosis. Clinicians may also use gonadotropin-releasing hormone or GnRH analogs. So using these GnRH analogs can essentially shut down the pulsatile nature of GnRH and cause a reduction in pituitary-induced fluctuations in other hormones like estrogen. And then in some cases, surgery may also be required in order to actually remove the endometrial tissue from certain parts of the body, some of those locations we talked about before. So again, diagnosis involves laparoscopy, looking for where endometrial tissue may have traveled to. Histology can be used to confirm that that is in fact endometrial tissue by seeing endometrial glands and stroma. Treatment involves combined oral contraceptive pills to help regulate the menstrual cycle in these individuals. Danazole can be used. Gonadotropin-releasing hormone analogs can also be used. And in some cases, surgery will be required. So if you want more information on other gynecological conditions, please check out my playlist on those topics. And if you haven't already, please consider liking, subscribing, and clicking the notification bell to help support the channel and stay up to date on future lessons. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope to see you next time.